हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू आर लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन फ्लाइट डायनामिक्स दिस इज सेक्शन वन क्रूज फ्लाइट परफॉर्मेंस इन टूडेज वीडियो विल गो थ्रू द कैलकुलेशन फॉर इंड्यूस ड्रैग इन आर लास्ट वीडियो वी सो वॉट इज इंड्यूस ड्रैग लेट मी जस्ट समराइज वट इज इंड्यूज ड्रैग इंड्यूज ड्रैग इज अग बट एज द एप्लिन फाइज देर इज अ प्रेशर डिफरेंस ऑन अपर एंड लोअर सर्फेस ऑफ द विंग सो एट द अपर सर्फेस ऑफ द विंग वी हैव लोअर प्रेशर लोअर सर्फेस वी हैव हायर प्रेशर सो ड्यू टू दिस प्रेशर डिफरेंस Air at the lower surface tries to move up, and near the wing tip, vortices are formed. Now, due to the formation of the vortices, there is a, some downwash induced. Now, you can see from this diagram. Let us assume that this is an airfoil. Its cord is inclined at some angle alpha, where alpha is geometric angle of attack. It is facing air something like this. This is local. This is v infinity. Now, what happens that due to downwash W, the local flow over the airfoil gets disturbed, and there is an in induced angle of attack alpha i. This is known as downwash angle. Although the wind is coming in this direction, but on the airfoil locally the flow will be in this direction. So there is an extra angle of attack alpha i. Due to this alpha i, the lift which would have been perpendicular to v infinity is now perpendicular to local relative wind, which which is at alpha i so the lift vector gets inclined by alpha i so due to this inclination there is a horizontal component of lift as well now uh, this horizontal component acts as an additional drag this is known as induced drag so this is what is induced drag now coming to the calculations of this induced drag from the diagram itself we can see that this induced drag di is equal to L sin alpha i. So from the diagram itself, we can see that di is equal to L sin alpha i. Alpha i is generally very small value, and if you take it in radians, you can say that di is equal to L alpha i. In the in the first lecture of this video series, we we learned the formula for drag and lift, where drag was half rho v square s c d. Similarly, c di would be Half rho v square s c d i. In a in a similar manner, l is half rho v square s c l. So using these two formula and trying to non-dimensionalizing this equation, we get c d i is equal to c l into alpha i. Now this alpha i is basically induced angle of attack. Now this induced angle of attack. depends on downwash downwash throughout the platform and this downwash throughout the platform basically depends on the lift throughout the platform for a general wing throughout this wing span the lift will vary it won't remain same throughout the wing span why this wing uh, lift will vary is because generally we have tapered wings so for tapered wings the core length will vary from root to tip core of the airfoil is varying the airfoil will produce different amount of lift another reason for this variation is that wing may actually be twisted like you can see in this diagram there are different angle of incidence of tip and at root so the airfoil will see different angle of attack and it will produce different amount of lift so we can say that lift will not remain constant throughout the wing span another reason for this could be that airfoil sections may also be varied there are cases that we we don't have same airfoil throughout at root we might have nakar 2412 at tip we might have naka 0012 or some other airfoil so depending on the design of aircraft airfoil itself may vary so we have three reasons for variation of the uh, lift one length of the cord may vary then angle of incidence that is wing may be twisted and airfoil shape may also vary so due to all this variation we might not have constant lift but the lift may vary throughout the now since the uh, since the lift is varying downwash will also vary accordingly now let us assume that we have a wing with elliptical lift distribution such as shown in this figure these arrows basically shows elliptical lift distribution in such a case we have constant downwash so this is showing that we have constant or uniform downwash throughout the wing span so if we go through finite wing theory for elliptical lift distribution alpha i is equal to cl upon pi ar where cl is coefficient of lift pi is the constant and ar is aspect ratio where ar is equal to b square by s where b is this wing span and s is the span area or wing area 
so this is true for elliptical lift distribution now to have elliptical lift distribution wing must have these three properties that there should be same airfoil throughout the wing span there should be no twist and the wing planform should also be elliptical now such a wing is actually rare and one such example is british spitfire aircraft which was basically a world war 2 aircraft but generally you will not find such elliptical wings because it is not economical to manufacture the elliptical wings for general wings the formula is modified as alpha i is equal to cl upon pi a r e dash where e dash is span efficiency factor so the for general wings the formula is modified as alpha i is equal to cl upon pi a r e dash where e dash is span efficiency vector for an elliptical wing e dash will be equal to 1 for other wings e dash will be less than 1 for general subsonic aircrafts e dash varies between 0 0.85 to 0 0.95 so this is the general value for subsonic wings so we can say that cdi can be written as cl into cl into alpha i so this can be written as cl into cl upon pi a r e dash so cdi can be written as cl square by pi a r e dash so as we know that e dash will be equal to 1 for elliptical wing so one may say that cdi is minimum for elliptical wings the formula we can make out that cdi i is directly proportional to cl square so near cl max cdi holds a substantial value and it becomes a major part of total drag now from the formula of cdi we, we may also conclude that cdi is inversely proportional to 1 upon aspect ratio so if we have a wing with larger aspect ratio cdi will be reduced so there are ex uh, examples of wings with very high aspect ratio one such example is lockheed u2 aircraft the aircraft that you can see in figure so this wing has very high aspect ratio you can see this is a very long wing so long wing means a very high aspect ratio wing so if we have a wing with very high aspect ratio induced drag will be greatly reduced so that's it for today's lecture in our next video we will see what are what are the total drags acting on the aircraft and then we will see what is drag polar and we will derive the equation for drag polar so if you have any doubts in video please write in the comment box and i will try to clear all the doubts if you like this video please press like subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon thank you for watching concepts and explain